The Rock and the River was my first novel, and it's set in 1968 Chicago. It's about a boy named Sam who's 13, and his father is a civil rights activist, and then his older brother joins the Black Panther Party. And so Sam finds himself caught between these two seemingly opposite ideals of change. You know, we often hold up the civil rights movement and we say the nonviolent civil rights movement and, you know, the Black Panther Party as Black power militancy. We look at them as sort of opposites, right? Um, but the reality is these were both movements that were about equality and justice and peace and change and transformation up against um, an extreme force uh, of white supremacy, police brutality, a lot of challenges that have been going on in black communities for hundreds of years. And both of these groups stood up against those challenges and they took different approaches. So for Sam in 1968 in Chicago, he's trying to figure out who he's going to be in this landscape, in this movement. And for me, that was something I was struggling with at the time I was writing it. I was trying to imagine, gosh, who would I have been if I had been alive in 1968? You know, would I have been a civil rights activist? I always thought so growing up, reading all of this historical fiction that I loved. But then I learned a little bit about the Black Panther Party and I learned that they weren't just black men with guns who were bad and scary, something we shouldn't even talk about, right? We whisper about the Black Panthers as if they're so scary, but they were a community organizing group. They armed themselves to protect their communities against police brutality. They were not trying to cause violence. They were not trying to cause trouble. They were trying to take care of people. They had free breakfast programs. They had health clinics. They started schools. They registered voters, just like the civil rights movement protesters. So there were a lot of commonalities between these movements. And I found it to be such a teasing question. Who would I have been if I had lived in that place in that time and had to face the same kinds of choices that a person like Sam at the age of 13 would have had to make in that time and place. And so I think a lot of people, a lot of my readers can empathize and understand that struggle that who am I gonna be? Who do I want to be? How am I gonna make a difference in the world? Is it possible for me to make a difference in the world? Am I gonna be like my father? Am I gonna be like my brother? Am I gonna be like my friends? What kind of difference can I make? And while we are facing those same questions today, young people are facing those same questions today, when we look at that through a historical lens, when we look back at something that happened 60 years ago and say, well, what, what did Sam do? What would it have been like to make those decisions in Sam's landscape? I think that gives us a little bit of distance to understand our own desires, to understand our own interests, to imagine ourselves in this noble posture of being part of something that was really challenging. It was challenging to be a civil rights activist. You had to put your life on the line. You had to put your freedom on the line for justice because you believed in it so strongly. And still today we face those decisions. Am I going to go to a protest? How am I gonna stand up for what I believe in? We still face the same struggles that people faced in the 1960s. We still have police brutality. We're still confronting white supremacy. We're still trying to make sense of the history of injustice that is part of our landscape. We're trying to make sense of the injustice that is part of our landscape right now. And so for me, historical fiction is a really good and safe and exciting place to explore those questions without the pressure that you feel about what you're going to do right now in the real world. And it gives you a way to talk about those big challenging issues with a little bit of distance that gives it a little bit of comfort, that makes it feel safer than it really is when push comes to shove. For more author interviews, please visit adlid.org. This author interview was produced through a partnership of the National Education Association and WETA.